Hi, and welcome to Your Network Expert. In this video, we're going to talk about how to take the Raspberry Pi desktop operating system, some people call it Raspbian, and put it onto VirtualBox. And what VirtualBox is a virtualization software that is open source and runs on various different types of platforms, such as Windows, Linux, Macintosh, Solaris. You might want to use this if you want to, for example, give the Raspberry Pi operating system a try or you do need some sort of lightweight applications that you want to have a separate virtual machine to operate these things. Now, what this won't allow you to do is Raspberry Pi is very famous for its input and outputs. And when it's done in a virtual environment, you don't have the ability to do those input and outputs. This here is just more for doing uh, network app type applications or even giving the operating system a try. So the first thing we need to do is download VirtualBox if you haven't done so already. It's virtualbox.org and I'll make sure the link is in the description below. And this is where the latest and greatest virtual box is. And as I mentioned, it runs on uh, various different types of operating systems. So you do have the ability to move the virtual machine from one operating system to another without any issues. The next thing that you need to do is to download the actual Raspberry Pi desktop. To go and do that is raspberrypi.org slash software slash raspberry dash pi dash desktop. And you would have to scroll down until you see where it has a download. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to let you go and download that right now. And then we'll continue on with uh, the rest of the installation. Now that we finished downloading the .iso file for our operating system and installed VirtualBox if you needed to, what we're going to do now is actually going to go into VirtualBox and we're going to create the actual new operating system itself. So we're going to click on new and we're going to give it a name. I already have Raspberry Pi in there, so I'm just going to call this one YNE underscore RP. And I'm going to select the type Linux, and I'm going to select Debian 32-bit for this particular uh, operating system. The next thing it's going to ask you is the memory size. Now, I want to make sure that I do have enough memory on it, so I'm going to put it at uh, 2 gigabytes or 2,048 megabytes. You can expand this as much as you want, but just please be careful with regards to not giving it too much. You still have to have some resources for your host operating system, and you don't want to have the virtual machine take up all those resources when it actually just doesn't need it itself. As I mentioned, the Raspberry Pi desktop is actually a relatively lightweight operating system. And so we don't want to take up too much resources from the host because it will affect other things that, are, that the host is working on. So then we're going to click on Next, I always leave a create virtual hard disk whenever the, it asks you for the hard disk. So I'm going to click on create and I leave it set for the default as the VDI or the virtual box disk image. Clicking on next. And I'm going to, when it says storage on the physical hard disk, I'm going to set it to dynamically allocated. This will only use space on your physical hard disk as it fills up to a maximum fixed size. Although it will not shrink again automatically when the space is freed itself. So I always leave it at, at that. So I'm just going to click on next. Now we're going to tell it how much disk space are we going to allocate for this actually particular file. For this demonstration, I'm just going to leave it at eight gigabytes. We're not going to be doing very much with this uh, particular operating system. So we're just going to leave it at eight gig for now, but you can expand it out as much as you'd like. Click on create. And so from now, um, it will come up and give you a little bit of a review of what we set up. Now, there's a couple of other things that we have to do before we can get started with regards to the actual operating system itself. And what we have to do is we have to click on settings and we have to go into storage. So what we have to do now is we have to tell VirtualBox where is that .iso file that we downloaded. From there, what we do is we go under the controller IDE and we click on the empty disk. And from there, what will happen is the attributes will come up and there will be another blue disk with a down arrow on it. Now, I've already downloaded it. And as I mentioned, I've already created a, another Raspberry Pi instance. It will come up in here of uh, your last few operating systems that you've used. But if you haven't got it in here, then all you have to do is click on choose a disk file and go in to the location of where you downloaded that .iso file and then just click on it and click on OK. So I'm just going to click on that and I'm going to click on OK. 
Now, the next thing I always like to do is I like to go into the settings and I like to set the network to bridged adapter. And so what that does is that Raspberry Pi operating system or any other uh, virtual operating system that's being used with VirtualBox will actually connect up through your adapter to your network. And so it will act as if you physically are plugging in or you're using wireless into your local area network. And I just prefer to do it that way uh, just so that I can gain access to whatever types of services that are running on the virtual machine itself or for the virtual machine to actually be a part of the actual LAN itself. Now, the next thing you have to make sure you do is you select the, the proper adapter. A lot of machines have uh, various different types of adapters. So your hard adapters on for my machine here, I have an Intel Wireless AC9560 wireless adapter, but I also have an Ethernet adapter as well too. So I'm running on wireless right now, so I'm just going to keep it on wireless. But anytime you want to switch back and forth, you have to come back into here and change what type of adapter you're actually using. And then you're just going to click on OK. And so now that it's set up so that it will go out and get a DHCP address. I'll do another video later on with regards to how to set up if you want to do a static IP address. So we're ready to go. So now what we have to do is we just click on start. And so a second pop-up window will pop up, select a startup disk, and you would go in and it'll show the actual operating system that you want to install. So the RASP iOS Buster, uh, for example, if it's not there, just uh, click on the folder and then go and find it. And then once you're done that, you click on start. And from here, it's going to ask you what you want to do with regards to this .iso file. And so what we're going to do is we're going to arrow down and click on install. And I'm going to select the American English for my keyboard. So now from here, it's going to be doing some things in the background. It'll ask us in a second or two to do some specific actions. So now what it's going to do is talk to us about partitioning the actual disk itself. Now, this is the actual virtual disk that we created. What I do for this one here, I always select guided use the entire disk. And it's going to come up and it's going to show you, okay, well, there's only one disk that has been associated. And that's the one this virtual box has actually created. So you'll actually see it as VBox hard disk. So you know that you're not going to be installing this onto your host operating system. So I just hit enter from here. And I want to fill all files in one partition. So I want to hit enter again. And from here, it says, um, it shows you all the information that is how it's going to set it all up, including what the primary partition size is going to be. So in this case, it's going to be 7.6 gigabytes. And then the logical partition or the swap partition is going to be one gigabyte. So I'm okay with this. So I'm just going to click on finish partitioning and I'm going to write changes to the disk. And once again, it's going to ask you, you know, are you sure you want to do this? Because you will overwrite any information that is on this disk. And so I'm just going to arrow over to yes, and I'm going to hit enter. And so now it's going to start partitioning disk. And so I'm going to take a little bit of a break while it's installing the system. And I'm going to come back when the next action for you is to take place. Okay. So now the next thing that's going to happen is the operating system is going to ask, where do you want the bootloader to be installed onto? And we're going to say we're going to install Grub bootloader onto the master boot record. So we're going to just going to say yes. And from here, it's going to ask you which actual drive or where do you want to actually put it? What we're going to do is we're going to say onto dev slash SDA. Now this might be a little bit different than what uh, you might have on your installation. So I pause it for a little bit and now we've got the installation is complete. So we're going to click on continue or hit enter to continue. And it's just going to finish cleaning up the installation process. And so from here, it will actually now reboot again into VirtualBox for the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so now the Raspberry Pi operating system is now in a virtual machine on VirtualBox, but you still have to do some other things before you can start diving into checking out the Raspberry Pi desktop. So the first thing we have to do is we have to click on next and we have to set our country. So I'm just going to set it to where I am and that is here in Canada. So I'm going to scroll all the way up to Canada and it's going to be Canadian English and my time zone is actually in the Edmonton time zone. Then I'm going to click on next and it's going to set the location. So this might take a second or two 
to complete. And then it's going to ask you to change your password. So you should always do this. Uh, the username and password for Raspberry Pi is well known throughout the world. In, at this point, you should put in a new password. It will synchronize the clock. And if it does come up with an error, just click on OK and then click on Done. Thank you for joining me today. If you like this video, please uh, click on the like. Make sure you subscribe as well as uh, check the links below for information with regards to this video. Have a great day and we will see you next time.